Hi friends, this is Mindy Egan and I'm back with another video for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm going to be mixing it up a little bit. So I am taking an older stamp set and giving it a little bit of love by mixing it with some newer stamp sets. The stamp set I'm using is the Fab Flowers. One night while scrolling through YouTube, a suggested video was the Fab Flowers video from Lawn Fawn and I was very inspired by it and wanted to dig this out to play. So the first thing I did was I die cut out a bunch of the images, just die cutting. I didn't stamp anything yet. I'm going to start with this kind of leaf looking image first. And I have a piece of scratch paper in my Misty tool and I'm going to stamp this image down in celery stick ink. So I'm just stamping that on that scratch paper. Now I also had gone ahead and created a template with all of those die cuts. I just need one for each image. And this is maybe two by two and a half, somewhere around there, just a small piece of cardstock with that die cut out. I layered that over my image, lining it up, and then I held it down with some post-it tape I placed one of those die cut pieces inside of that template and then stamped this down. So now I have this perfectly stamped image and all of my edges are nice and even. So I will be repeating this step again. And this is also a really great way to mass produce. You don't have to keep lining up the die over the image and worry about if it's straight or not. Since I have that template and I'm not getting it dirty or inky, I can save this template for future cards. I also changed up the colors a little bit. So this one I believe is jalapeno. So I'll have some light and some dark greens. Now I'm going to repeat this step again for this uh, other set of leaf. leaves, leaves. And this one is actually a two step. So there's another image that's going to go on top. But once again, I started by stamping the image down onto that scratch paper, lined up my template over that stamped image, held it down with that post-it tape and then placed one of my blank die cut pieces in there and stamped on it again. So I'll repeat the process again just to show you how easy this is to get these lined up. Now this one happens to be the image that has that little bit of extra detail. So the first set of the, or the leaves I had stamped in celery stick ink. And now this little detail part I had stamped in the jalapeno. So it's got that light green and dark green once again. Now this image is the rose. So this is the first layer of the rose that I'm stamping in ballet slippers, which is going to be a really light pink, starting off by stamping that image down first so I can line my template over it and then placing that blank die cut piece in the middle. And sometimes the stamp will pick it up. You can just peel it off of your stamp. It's not going to hurt anything. You could stamp it once for a lighter look or twice if you want a little bit darker of a color. Now this second layer of the rose, I had a little bit of trouble trying to line it up in my template. So I stamped it off on the side as its own area or its own little image. And then just took my template again, the same one, and lined that up over it. And it seemed to work out really well. I'm only showing you a few of each, but I do have multiples set off on the side and I don't use them all in today's card, but I am going to save them for any future projects. This larger flower, I experimented a little bit. I started off, I think, by stamping in a merman or mermaid ink, um, the merman ink I think I did. And I thought that was too dark at first, so I do switch it up and do kitty pool instead. So I do have two different shades of blue flowers on my card. I actually kind of wish I would have stuck with the darker color, but they both look really pretty. So after I have a bunch of these done, I'm going to bring in the details. Now this one I did go ahead and line up inside of that same template and that same area I stamped in. And this one, I'm just going to choose a shade darker. So when I used Kitty Pool, I stamped it in Merman ink. And when I had the darker base flower, I stamped it in Peacock ink. So for this last flower here, this one's a little bit smaller. I started by stamping that base layer in Butter ink. And then I'm going to bring in the second layer of this image and stamp it in Sunflower ink. Once I have all of my images stamped out, I'm going to work on the rest of the elements on my card, starting with creating the basket for my flowers. I will be using the fruit basket die and I'm die cutting this out of craft cardstock. Then I'm going to take that die cut 
and I'm going to trace it onto another piece of craft. I want to have a backing. I didn't want you to be able to see through the basket. So after I have that traced down, I'm going to just trim that out with my scissors. I'm going to add a little bit of color to my basket. This is the uh, front part of the basket. So this is ink blending on some walnut ink. And then I'm going to layer these two together or just for right now, get a look at how it's coming together. So that was trimmed down pretty good. If there is anything hanging over the edge, you can trim it down later or now with some scissors. So here is my idea. I wanted to have this basket of flowers. If you ever see those hanging baskets, mine isn't hanging over too much, but I just had this idea of a basket full of flowers for the front of my card. It was easier for me to go ahead and get my basket glued together, at least that bottom portion. Now I had it all arranged. I had the flowers arranged. If you were happy with your arrangement, you could take some press and seal and put that over your flowers to save that arrangement. I didn't think of it at the time, but it is a really handy tool. Now this background, I just quickly ink blended on some tumble glass, leaving some white spots. I made big circles with my blending tool so that it did leave those open areas. And then here I have some wood grain cardstock and I'm just rubbing over it with walnut ink and that's going to really intensify the texture of that wood grain cardstock. Now that I have a pretty good idea about how my card is going to come together, I have kind of my base or my table that my basket of flowers is going to sit on. I'm going to start gluing my flowers down and I'm starting with the very outer edge there to have them overhanging and then starting to tuck flowers behind it. I am using a tape runner to do this because it's easier for me to remove them if I want to adjust it or just shift things around. It's easier to do that with a tape runner than if you were using liquid glue. So I'm just trying to space these out really well. It's about this point that I realized I really liked that darker blue flower, but I still used the light ones. I just, I liked the contrast between the flowers a little bit better with that darker blue. Now I couldn't resist adding some of these cute little mice to my scene. So I have some mice from Dandy Day and Bubbles with Joy. And then I also have some clouds here from All the Clouds stamp set. I also have a mouse on here from... Um, you Autumn Know, I believe is the stamp set, but I didn't end up using him. I think that's the jumping one. So I'm coloring these with Copic marker. I had stamped them out on uh, 80 pound white cardstock with jet black ink, and I'm using E44, 43, and 42 to color the body of my mice. And then I have E50 for the belly, and I did R21 for the nose and the ears. And I did a YG13 for my little dandelion, which I thought was a really cute fit to go with my basket of flowers. I didn't do any coloring to the clouds. I just left them completely plain white, but you could add a little bit of blue shading towards the bottom if you wanted to add some color to those. Now, I didn't think of it at the time, but I think adding some small little butterflies would have been really cute to put around my mice and my basket of flowers. After I have my images all colored in, I'm going to take the coordinating dies, line them up, hold them down with that post-it tape, and run this through my die cut machine. So here is what my scene is looking like so far. I have a couple clouds here off on each side. I have a sentiment off of the garden before and after, just kind of lining it up where it's going to go. Now I did go ahead and attach the clouds and also the base piece because those weren't going to be moving. Those were kind of my fixed points on the card at this point. I also have a stitched rectangle frame die cut from white cardstock. I die cut it twice to make sure it was kind of nice and solid and stable. And I attach that with some liquid glue. Before I do anything else, I need to stamp my sentiment to make sure I have room for it. So I trimmed off the clouds that were hanging off the edge of the card. I have this sentiment here off of the garden before and after that I'm just making sure is nice and straight using my Misty Corner tool. Once I'm fairly certain this is nice and straight, I can pick that up with the door of the Misty, remove that Misty Corner, and then I will ink this up with jet black ink, or you can use black licorice ink. And to make sure that it is a nice, crisp stamped sentiment, I'm going to stamp it twice. After I have that stamped down, I can start putting together my card. And I will start doing that by gluing down my basket of flowers. 
I am just going to use a tape runner to glue the flowers down. I thought about doing foam squares, but I really wanted to pop up the frame more than anything. So for the flowers, I'll just go ahead and add tape runner behind that. And I can add that to the front of the card kind of off on the side because I want to make sure I'm leaving room for my mice. Once this is attached down, which I will have kind of hanging off of the edge of the card a little bit because I really like that look. I am going to take some foam and trim it down into really thin strips and I'm going to add those strips behind that stitched frame. So that's another reason why I had die cut that stitched frame twice. I wanted to make sure it was nice and stable and solid so I could add that foam tape behind it and then I can add this to the front of my card. The last thing I need to do is just add my cute little mice, which I will be doing with little foam squares and adding them around the basket. And I thought it was just so adorable with that mouse that is floating down with the dandelion. I think that was just a really super cute added element to go with my basket of flowers. And if you've never tried adding ink to your textured cardstock, give it a try. I think it is a really great, great technique to just bring out the details of that cardstock. So while I made this a general occasion card, I think it would make a really great Mother's Day card. That finishes up my card project for today. I hope you enjoyed a couple of these smaller techniques and things you can do to your card to help just kind of dress it up a little bit. And also taking a look at your stamp sets and combining some new and old sets together. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.